Afshen Sangonan and welcome to another episode on Saseka Soccer News, the Blue Cup series where we give you exclusive interviews. You know, on Saseka Soccer News, we talk all things South African soccer and my guest for today is no stranger to the soccer fraternity. He is a player, a motivational speaker, an analyst and so much more and I cannot wait to get into conversation with him. For you at home, don't forget to click the like, the notification and the subscription button so you can keep up to date with all of our content. Bob Marks, welcome to Saseka. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. You are most welcome and thank you for um, taking my call. I have to share a story. The first time I met you, I was gymming at uh, the gym and I was about to actually give up and you were encouraging me to say, no, continue, carry on. And from that day, I was like, oh, wow, this is the guy I see playing soccer and today I'm running next to him on the treadmill. So this is like a full circle moment for me. Thank you for coming, really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Now, you actually don't look your age. You look very, very young. Can I tell the listeners your age? Yeah, you do. So he's actually 60, by the way. It doesn't look like it at all. Just a number. It's just a number, but how important is health to you? Very important. Uh, important in the sense that uh, one has done this for a living. This yeah. as in training. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine uh, the days when I even went when I didn't want to, but because I was paid. Yes. But you know, when you do it because you're getting paid, yeah. it becomes a good habit only if you want to chase it as a habit. Sure. And uh, it was a question of I'm about to retire, I'm planning to retire. 1997, I was uh, playing at Jets, mm-hmm. and then I thought I would retire in 1998. Mm-hmm. So, what happened is uh, 1997, I decided I'm going to run for Epi Marathon. Okay. I ran the 21 Ks. Yeah. And uh, after running the 21 Ks for about what, five, seven years, yeah. I got into it. Mm-hmm. But the only thing about 21 Ks, obviously, one was still strong from training, yes. football those days in the gym and then I could come back early you know the 21 guys will wait for the 45 yeah and every time I'll jump onto a bicycle and go the route of the 25 I mean the 45 and just laughing at them and I'm thinking why don't I run the 45 yes <laughs> instead of uh, laughing at the people who struggle yeah and that's how i took up the 45 and since then i never looked back uh, mm-hmm. sorry the 42. the 42 so i did the 42 the suetu and uh, from then i got about what 16 of them and then i died my goodness so that's that's one thing that uh, got me going yeah, even yeah. post play yes. and then i thought i might as well continue training yeah then i do play five aside i don't play full pitch soccer okay i play five aside as much as one still feels fit yeah. you still have to preserve yourself yes. Your, yes. yourself because you know that you're not as young yeah, you know? yeah. i remember yeah. one of the sweat marathons that i ran and uh, they had changed the route near Kasech and uh, so it caught you now. to Riven and I was running with uh, my daughter oh nice and I said I am tired my daughter said listen we've been running this and you are no more 22 you yes. are 42 at the yes. time because I remember that's another what 20 years mm. so you are bound not to chase your four hours mm. because I did it at uh, the first uh, Few years, I was doing it at what uh, four twenty. Sure, very fast time. Fast time, and then she said, and he said to me, "Stay with your pace. Yeah. You're not young anymore." Mm. And I did it at six eleven. I was impressed. You were just because I you said sometimes for yourself. Exactly. So sure. that's what happens. But from then one just kept on training, and even now I keep on training. Okay, mm-hmm. I love that. Now most people don't know your story and how you actually got into playing soccer. I'd love for you to articulate that for us. I started as a youngster and uh, growing up in Middle East, Soweto, mm-hmm. Zone 1. And uh, as a youngster from Dofaya, I did what every neighborhood boy would do. Mm-hmm. Playing football in with a plastic ball. Sure. Or also stuffing pantyhose holes with a lot of papers mm-hmm. and knock that around. And then when it became the business of the day, is when you now have a plastic ball yes. and you or at stake in those days at stake would be the tennis ball because mm. tennis ball was so precious mm. because mm. tennis was an expensive sport sure. Uh, sure. and is still an expensive sport mm. but mm. was a 
tennis ball was precious mm. for the time she uh, youngster. So she also grew up and she had a tennis ball to be like, wow, yeah. my parents made it for me. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we would have those at stake, maybe 10 uh, an inch back from the inner case of, you know? Sure. And the goals were just trees of pain. Mm. And then one of those were if you hit a hard shot and the goalkeeper doesn't jump, he just bounces and then he says, No, he jumped, he's not a goal. <laughs> but uh, it was those days where we ended up uh, having dustbins. Remember when uh, we started issuing the timesheets with the dustbins? Then we would use the dustbins as we are poles. You know? yeah, but uh, the interesting thing about the timesheet story is that uh, the support I got from the family was that. I will never forget my mom would be hanging on the fence or by the gate and maybe after running around then she would hang the glass of milk. <laughs> just to encourage you, oh my yeah. goodness. Because you would be playing just along the street like that. Uh. And those were the days, very interesting. And then she became serious. Okay. I got to lower primary school, okay. higher primary. Those two in particular before I even touch on the high school. Mm. The lower primary school, I was so talented that uh, I wasn't playing with my peers. Remember mm. those were the days where they would use a measure mm. stick. Mm. But mm. I would even need to be, uh, not need to be measured. Because of your talent. Because the, the stick would be here, but I would be this so short. So high. So they would just say, no, you need playing straight away with this go. team anyway. Let him go. And I would play with the elderly guys and uh, take them on and uh, score goals. Then it became a norm even in the higher primary. Mm. Then when we got to high school, mm. that when uh, our school was the best. Mm. For one simple reason. And uh, that reason is because the, the principal, mm. Chief Lefant, loved sports. Mm. It's the only school in the township that had rowing, mm. that had tennis, wow. that had uh, the boat in a, a competition. Canoeing. Canoeing, you know? Sure. And the bus would come and take those canoes and uh, soccer really was the real thing, thing and the boxing. And he was the only principal that at school, and the other teachers didn't like it. At school, the teachers would have to come early in order to make sure that they lock up the gates mm. for those who come after seven. Because you have to be there at six to have a five to seven K run. Wow. And then come back and then you can open the gates. Really? Because he believed that the healthy body only has a healthy mind. Mm. You know? Literally. Uh, literally. You know? Love it. Mm. Love it. So you have had an amazing career. I mean you played for Brooks University. Victoria Setubal, did I say it correctly? Mm -hmm. Orlando Pirates, um, Kaiser Chiefs, such amazing and big teams as well. And you also played nationally. Which was your most memorable club? I would say Kaiser Chiefs because uh, it also set the tone. Mm -hmm. Set the tone in the sense that uh, I was uh, at Yellow Creek High School mm -hmm. with uh, James Lucan Nelson, mm -hmm. of whom the great Mr. Ben. Mustard Leeds in Kenya. We talk to guys who tanked professional. At our school, seven, no, nine. Nine players tanked professional. Yeah. I love in the school. The coach, yeah. the, from the principal as well. Yes. He instilled that in you guys. And thanks to him, you know, he showed us who his kids did uh, set us a tone to an extent because that school was winning almost everything. Mm. And that is why we produced seven players to different teams. Morocco Sobers, Kaiser Chiefs, all on the Pirates. Mm. Sure. So we we were spotted there by yeah. the way. Yeah. At some point our school was doing so well that if you working on Wednesday, on Wednesday only, mm. the guys would know that uh, our school would be playing against uh, Dr. Kumar School, Yellow Creek versus Dali mm. So everyone who's working would come up with an excuse. Not sure. to go, uh, not to go back after lunch because, you want to because they want to go the to the township and watch these two schools. You know? And it, that's how it all started. And then we became schoolmates, mm -hmm. opponents over the weekend, 
But and we are going to school together. And heroes at school too, you know? I love and it. it just was a challenge. A challenge in a sense that uh, we now have to focus on your studies, mm -hmm. but also become a better professional. Mm -hmm. And coming from a and very from a young age. A young age. And coming from a strict family, uh, my dad did not take well. Okay. Can I remember family too? Yes. But never, never wanted me to not focus on my studies. Yes. So okay. he would just say to me, do your homework, are you ready? Mm. This is, mm. I've just mm. got your team in <laughs> and mm. you are asking me all those questions. But uh, just on a lighter note, the fascinating part of my, uh, my dad and uh, encouragement is that uh, one day he played uh, we had a great uh, distance. And it was a night game. And we flew back. You remember those days of midnight flights? I don't think it's still in one stop. You remember that? So as we, as, as I got home, I got a lot of selfish. Yeah. I knocked on the room open. What are you doing? This time. At this time, I said, I'll open the door. You know, so you can't come from the day you know, We are uh, the conversation is through the, through the, the key window. hole, not the keyhole. The key. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then I said, No, but that uh, we were playing in Durban. He says, No, it, you shouldn't have been playing in Durban when the commentary was so clear on oh. radio. <laughs> so I heard it, but I'm proud of you for playing, but I'm not happy that you but went there. It was so clear on radio, so it couldn't have been in Durban. <laughs> Anyway, but uh, that's how the pressure was, where now chiefs would beat swallows mm. over the weekend. And the then, true Soweto Giants, actually. True Soweto Giants. The true Soweto you know? Giants. And then you would uh, have that uh, pride at school. Go to school then, on like, Monday because, like, uh, what happened on the yeah. weekend? <laughs> and remember, some of the players are playing for swallows. They would beat swallows, you know? Sure. And uh, you were the scorer. And those were the moments. And then oh, over and above that, then we would play your Dalyongas and the Tabo as mm -hmm. the Godfather School. And we would be pro uh, what is paraded on on the uh, on the on the stool at the assembly. Oh, you know? That's so yeah. sweet. And we always look forward to your studies. So that is good when you mm -hmm. do something at school, mm -hmm. something that can also motivate you. Yeah. So not all is lost when somebody is not a true complete academia, you know? Yeah. There are other things that can motivate one to yeah. still be at home in school. And little did one know that uh, the dad was molding me also to, mm -hmm. to be what I could be. Mm -hmm. What I could be and I'm being, I'm being modest that at least I can read a pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at least you have a very important skill. You know, you know, when I say at least you can read a pencil, the sad thing is you can be talented, but uh, when you get given a contract, you don't even know the contents mm. of the contract. You mm. always want to hear from the agent. You always want to hear from somebody. Sure. You know? And their and interest might not be for you. It yes. might be for their own mm. interest as well. Yeah. Sure. So those are the advantages of mm. making sure that you put education first. Sure. And talent will obviously tag along. Mm. Tag along. It shouldn't be the other way Taking around. over. Yeah. Beautiful advice. Mm. Now you mentioned Kaiser Chiefs set the tone. You still hold the title of Kaiser Chiefs for the most goals scored, 85 goals scored. Um, what does that mean to you to know that after so many years, your name is still very, very prominent at the Kaiser Chiefs camp? To be honest, uh, yes, I'm proud of that, mm. but it's not lingering in my mind. Okay. Uh, you always say what you've done. It's what had to be done at the time. Mm. But you're not going to be spending the rest of your life looking at that and mm. think, oh, I'm holding this record, I'm holding this record. You could hold the record, but uh, your bank account is holding on to the Yeah, <laughs> you know? true, true. So you've got to move on and say, mm. what needs to be done? Mm. It's good that is done, but what needs to be done? Mm. And I've always been a kind of person that uh, speaks to people, motivates them, encourages them. As a motivational speaker, one who always uh, say, yes, it's done, but it is not the only thing. Mm -hmm. You've got to move on and say, what's next? What's the best that can be done? Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, what's been your most memorable goal that you scored in your career? 
was being accused and uh, the only memorable moment that uh, it's not the goal in particular I speak about the goal but it's not a goal in particular it was the only time where I scored a head streak in the cup final. Mm, that's memorable. You can't, I mean, across the world, yeah. you don't find too many Very players great. scoring three goals in a cup final. Final, exactly. Yeah. And that was when we played against Renata Rangers in Durban. Mm. And uh, that was at the Aksa Stadium. And I scored a head streak in the first leg of the uh, sure. Cape South Cup final. First leg, first, first leg. leg. And uh, obviously by doing so, the second leg was just uh, mm. And that's my memorable moment. But uh, one of the best goals that I will never forget was when I was with Paris mm. and uh, we were playing on a rainy day. Mm. You know, when it's pouring mm. heavily mm. and non stop, but no lightning. So when there's no lightning, it means you have to keep playing. Sure, it's not dangerous. Mm. It's not being dangerous to stop playing. Yeah. yeah. And we played a team from Swaziland called 11 men in front. Okay. And there was a hard cross from the right by Julius Kosala and I went for a diving hit. And because of the rain, that thing hit the top corner, but I kept sliding. But the picture of it is just, you would swear I was in a swimming pool. Oh you just, <laughs> only when I stood up, then you could see soccer outfit. Mm -hmm. But it was just water all over. Sure. And it just provides a good picture. But other than that, it's the many bicycle kicks that mm. uh, one scored. Mm. And you find a lot of people still have those in mind. They, they remind me of uh, the bicycle kick that one scored. It's beautiful. I love that. Now, um, you have a nickname, Go Man Go. Where did you get that name from? I'm told that uh, at some point when uh, I was at Tati Chiefs, what happened was uh, you have the likes of uh, Dr. Kumayo. Mm. When we lead him by three goals to nil, as an example, then the guys will be knocking the ball around. Mm, I will never forget the, the every time when they knock the ball around and they taking a little out of opposition. Then when I'm asking for the pass, then they will say, "I don't want to make a <laughs> yeah. because then they knew that I wouldn't, um, I wasn't able to do all the fancy things. Mm. So I would just take it and then put the ball in the back of the net. Mm. And I did a group of friends um, somewhere, they just decided in that corner to say, I know it's a come and go, my legs in Thomas and so he's not doing that. You know? So how move a ball of a low tabata my own is, you know? And like that's the, how it came about. It's a go and go this one. Now, if we look at um, the current UFC Premiership, one of the things you're doing very well at, I mean, we have Mandan uh, saying that this is best league even in Africa. So what do you think is really working well in, in the current PSL UFC Premiership? What is working well is that uh, they are open-minded to get players from across the continent. I'd like to see that. That's actually very encouraging as well. And also not only across the continent, we do have the likes of Sundown and Amazon mm -hmm. and one or two other teams that mm. also have players from outside the, 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 the country, mm. which mm. is uh, as far as uh, your South America. Mm. Mm. And you've got uh, players from Slovakia. Mm. So, I mean, Norkovic just can't face sure. for, for, for Kazi Chiefs in Even the first Castro season. Even Castro are just beautiful. In the watch. first season, mm. you know? Mm. And did you say are just? We're just beautiful to watch. Are, are, well, well, <laughs> now they're struggling, let's admit okay, that. Now they're struggling, but okay, maybe say they were, and yeah. we are hoping that they will, they will be. be. Again. Sorry, I thought I am starting to analyze. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the, the analyst in you. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, that's those are the advantages. I mean, for them to acquire the services of the likes of Mercury, sure. it got everyone on their toes, meaning did. defenders and uh, mm. even other, other strikers teams. and other mm. teams to think, wow, this man has arrived. I mean, mm. the top, I mean, the, the football of the year last season, Shirt mm. Shalubin. Yeah. So from sundown. I mean, these are the advantages of this league, mm -hmm. where you have people who come here with a mission mm -hmm. and know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we had a year where Shalubi and uh, Mahango were sharing the, 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 the spoils, you know, mm -hmm. being, uh, being goal scorers, mm -hmm. and one from Malawi, one from Namibia. Mm -hmm. So those are the advantages to get the locals to check up their acts. Yes. Because the season before, it was Uzwana. Sure, you know? sure. 
and the issues are gone from sundowns mm. and then it just shows that these guys are here with a mission mm. so in a way you realize that we have moments where we say guys we cannot be always having uh, foreigners uh, dominating mm. it makes you think when you're at home you say why am i not doing right mm. you know? so that's the advantage of uh, psl and their clubs to acquire services of players that brings different dimension sure. of the game and, and that's happening everywhere in the world where yeah. when you have players from somewhere else the league gets better and better mm. Now, what can we do to improve the league? You're saying this is what we're doing well. Mm -hmm. Areas of improvement, what could be done here? They, when I say they, I mean the league. Mm -hmm. They have always strived to do the best. And the mm -hmm. best as in also getting PSTV to be the sponsors. Mm -hmm. You put in more money, mm -hmm. you put in more coffers for the teams mm -hmm. because there is money for the league. Mm -hmm. And then the players realize, or the clubs realize that there's a lot at stake. Sure. So, because there's a lot at stake, they don't take that money to spend or to save. Yes. They use that money to even acquire mm -hmm. services of players that you never thought they would. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it motivates them. I mean, one day you'll hear that, uh, I don't want to say Ronaldo, because I'm maybe still going at 40, but you'll hear that uh, maybe one quality player, let me say Vinicius Jr. Mm -hmm. from the uh, Real Madrid, mm -hmm. is joining Paris to oh. Sundown. We would love to see something like that, something honestly. Like that. It costs Africa, us money. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to see something like that in our time. So, basically, that improvement will bring more quality mm -hmm. to the league. Mm -hmm. And you will only benefit from it as well. And hopefully, this one now we have to put hope in. And hopefully, the national team becomes better. Because we yes. have a crisis there. Yes, we do have a crisis there. And I mean, you saw the weekend at COP, you were just spectators. Celebrating people that we don't know, and then we can't even pronounce their name. Now we just have to pick a team to say, My brother from Africa, I might as well, but where are we? And we won the first African Cup of Nations, and it was so sad to say, That was it, you know. Yeah. And if you, when you say that, it's so much of a norm with me that uh, when we're not in AFCON, or even when we in it, I start with us, then we come home, and then I say, Who's remaining from Southern Africa? Mm -hmm. Then I stick to those, and then I would now start teams except the one from North Africa mm -hmm. and then the last would be okay now I've got the open mind ah, because so there's nothing else stuck with Senegal mm -hmm. because I would say okay let's just go with somebody who looks like me <laughs> and that's another thing like, when we watch Senegal we're all like okay at least they look like us they sort of resemble us you know <laughs> we might as well go with them because mm -hmm. we are not there anyway but it shouldn't be the case no. we should go with that because of the quality we can't be the and best league in, 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 in continent and still can qualify for anything absolutely totally agree with you now we we're speaking earlier on that you know it does seem to be like there's a challenge at match arena what would be your advice to countries to say guys as a former player soccer legend this is what i think we can do better it's always the question of if all else fails go back to the basics mm -hmm. as they say if all else fails follow the manual you know mm -hmm. and the manual is very simple what makes the team team once you've answered that question, then you say, how best can we do that? Mm -hmm. And what made the team tick was that they would, uh, and I remember even when I got there, there would be superstars, mm -hmm. there would be players who are winning trophies, mm -hmm. and then you, they would be bloody in mm -hmm. the likes of me, mm -hmm. and others, your Dr. Pumalos, your Triple K, your Serge, mm -hmm. Kevin Pinto, in the team. Young, inexperienced, but with the winning team. Mm. And then we start playing a cup final from the bench. And then we start playing the second, the third. Remember when you don't play cup finals, you won't get confidence. Mm. Mm. Then we start playing when these ones are being just uh, soft out gradually. The ones that obviously had had all the glory and title. And then we take over. And the continuation, because we now know the philosophy of the team, mm -hmm. we now know what is expected of the team mm -hmm. and of us, mm -hmm. then we would continue winning trophies. But the way it happens now, I don't think I, I, I mm -hmm. go with. Not 
said, I don't think I like it. I don't go. I don't think I go. I go with that. You cannot be picky and choosing everyone where there is no fence. That is why in every house that you build, there's got to be a foundation. Sure, sure. And then when the house stands strong, then your confidence is there. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But with that, you now get everyone from everywhere. If you look at the squad now, you keep counting. Same people. No, from where they come from, not from the development of the team and not matched with the winners. Mm. And then you get your pillars to hook into you something. And then you get capital to hook into you something. And lots of, you can't keep buying players and hoping you can win something. You, you always, you can't, that's trying to buy victory. Mm. That is why, what, seven years now? Mm. No trophy? Mm. Mm. That's sad. For a big team like that sure. and they will always have to remember that the reputation of the team the aura of the team mm. will always be heavier on the shoulders of the players mm. Mm. and the more they don't win the more pressure they get yes, yes. because chips is an institution that has a real following you True, know truly and that following has expectations mm. and they don't just have expectations from no one you can't say chips and then say royal am mm. royal am is just newly found mm. Mm. but mm. chips have a reputation mm. and they have to win trophies yes. and that is why people have died for them along the way mm. and they don't realize that that guys what are we doing here mm. we're trying to buy success it's not the case mm. yes we have to buy let's be more than let's do what the world is doing mm. let's buy players new players quality players but we also have to plant them, plant them nicely. And they must win something. Because if we don't win anything, it means we'll be spending all this money, most of the salaries that they pay them. And at the end of the day, there's no trophy. Yeah. Now, that was just an investment. That's a lot of money. Every month, month 900,000, and there's no trophy. Mm. And just give me an example, because there will be the 450, there will be the 500,000 here and there. But there are the trophies. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure that the pride is there. Mm -hmm. By the way, we for, I popped in the last time and uh, I was talking to the boss guy. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, nah, just uh, this is how the whole chief's uh, village looks like. But at the corner there, we're going to buy, uh, we're going to build a, a sort of a trophy corner oh, where we would be displaying all that. And people would walk in, pay to come and uh, take pictures with the trophies and all. What they do everywhere in the world, you know, mm. Real Madrid, mm. Barcelona, and yes, all that, Manchester yes. United. So then I said, yeah, but uh, what if all of us come and take our own trophies? <laughs> 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 so there would be any, anything to take pictures with. Because as we put in, they take out. Sure. Okay. What was his response to that? No, he just said, yeah, but the <clears throat> generation is different. But uh, mm. we're hoping to get there. Hoping to get there, yes, is one thing. But then you also cannot hope to get there when you get a player. And with respect, get a player who's been scoring goals out in uh, Zambia. That is, uh, what's his name? Uh, he's been scoring goals in Zambia, got to Chiefs, Colombia or something. And he got there, he scored one goal. And then he's gone. And then he's gone. What is two years? One goal. You know? And, and they practice like for so many hours, going, you know? And then laughing, he has a team. But uh, he looks at these players because he didn't buy his business. He bought him for scoring goals. Mm, so know? he should come and do he's, that for us. Score goals, you know? So you, you, one, once you import, you've got to make sure that it's. It's worth every cent. And keep them the mandate to say, you're coming to do this, let's agree. Because they were looked after, one must say. Mm. They were looked no, after. Chiefs if is you a well go to that chief. village, it's something else. Oh, wow. I mean, on the opposite side is development. Mm. If you go to the dormitories, the farms, the fields, everything. And the guys come in there, the little room, there's a bed, and there's a study corner there. And and so, so why they have no reason to not deliver? You understand if they were not resourced, they were not taken care of them. But yeah, we've given you everything. We need to see the final result. Wait until we see a picture of one guy that uh, I've sent out to a team in Malala to deliver. 
come back with a good looking internet. It's, it's on, you know, one of those gym, um, gym stretch, mat. stretch mat. Yes. He slips on that. That guy is as tall as he likes. And he just slips there and he showers with the uh, jack. It's hoisins, uh, water on himself. Mm-hmm. And not everyone is as advanced as the biggest teams, but I mean, you look at that player's uh, performance versus these guys who say, guys, surely if this one with less resources can do it, you with the more resources should be doing better. Yeah, but the, the moral of the story is that once you've got all the things that you need, doesn't mean it's all systems fail. Mm-hmm. You've got it's always in you. And at because point, what you need is out there, mm-hmm. but what's in you is the one that will do it for Which is an extraction of your need. And that's why you're saying it's got to work on its blending and its building. Because everything else is there, but the heart has to be there. They've got to say, we haven't done anything in the last seven years. We, need, we owe it to their support. Mm-hmm. Like and to ourselves. The chairman. Chairman. Yeah. Yeah. The chairman, chairman. Well, when you say and to ourselves, you know the story. It's not like before. It's not about me. It's about uh, uh, am I getting myself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not owing them anything. Mm. Yeah. They want me, so that is why I'm here. If only football could be less about egos and more about the game, yeah. I think then we would start to see that heart coming through. Yeah, in fact, put it simple: uh, is only football had the Ronaldo mentality. Yo. They never say die, they, I yes. want this, they, I want to be a winner, kind of an attitude. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine if it's 11 players, maybe 35 squad members, mm-hmm. how good the competition would be, mm-hmm. where everyone is committed. I mean, if you want to hear a story about him and what he has and the rehabilitation um, equipment that he has for himself, mm-hmm. doesn't wait for the team. Mm. And that's commitment that I'm talking about. Mm. Because this is what brings money in. Mm. Why don't you buy all these uh, equipment that can make you recover mm. quicker even when you're at home? Don't wait to go to the club and get all the medical treatment. Mm. You know how you feel. It's your body. Mm. And that is why he's still in the game today. And still the top of his game, absolutely. You're very good at uh, sports analysis. Um, I have to ask you, what do you enjoy? Analysis? Commentating, do you think you'll ever be an agent at some at some stage? No, I'll never be an agent, but uh, I am in a way, if you know what I mean. Mm. You would have people coming to you mm. and saying, Listen, can you speak to so and so? And also, as much as I'm not, I would not his talent mm. and would not see, want to see it wasted. Sure. And I would give a call to mm. the guys that. I know and have played with who are coaches most of them nowadays and say please look at this thing. I don't say change this youngster. Mm-hmm. Please look at this thing. And then the youngster before he leaves, I say remember I asked him to look at you. Mm-hmm. I didn't say he must take you. Yes. So you can make him believe that you're yes. a good player. And I would do your part. You do your part. Mm-hmm. And that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. You just not recommend mm-hmm. but direct. Mm-hmm. Try your luck there. Mm-hmm. I can see something in you, but to be an out and out agent, I always would like to do things that are just uh, remote from what I'm known for. Mm-hmm. Just deviate completely, mm-hmm. you know. Just bring to construction, motivate you to be. Uh, I'll never forget, mm-hmm. and I will always be. Yeah, because always have you talk anyway yes. for a living. You, you might know? as well. You might as well. Sure. You know? So other than that, I would just you know stay away from. Game, mm. but I love it. You know, stay away, but love it. Yeah, from a distance. I be, from a distance, but I would watch almost every game. Literally. I see on Twitter. <laughs> sure. Literally. Sometimes if I missed it, I just go on your profile. Okay, this happened, alright. Yeah. But you know, it's so funny that uh, like today, two thirty, the games are starting. Mm. I'll be watching until twelve o'clock. That's how much you love Just it. across the world, it will be Spain. English Premiership, English Premiership, local, but it's just as long as it's football, mm. just love the game. And that's what they say. Every day. And that's why they say for the love of the game, yeah. right? <laughs> now I have to ask somebody who's watching at home and says, you know, I want to be a professional soccer player. What advice would you like to give them? I want to say, don't want and lose focus on doing what you do do, 
And why I'm saying this is I, over the years, have bumped into players or individuals who have been to trials almost everywhere. Forgetting school and going to ten clubs. They no. say, look at me, look at me. And the guy doesn't even get some. Just enjoy what you're doing. If you enjoy the moment, you realize that somebody somewhere is watching. You know the phrase that says, love like you've never been hurt, mm -hmm. and dance like no one is watching. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So do the same. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing, whenever you play at an amateur, play like no one is watching. Just have fun. Mm -hmm. And before you know, which is what happened to me, before you know, somebody will say, hey, I like this guy. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be told, oh, somebody is watching or was watching, mm -hmm. and they want you to join. That's how I joined by the so don't hop around and be desperate because sometimes when you get too desperate that's when you even get frustrated mm -hmm. you end up even doing wrong things mm -hmm. or cheating mm -hmm. maybe even taking performance enhancers mm -hmm. in order to cope mm -hmm. because there's always a difference between amateur and professional football mm -hmm. technically tactically and also endurance wise mm -hmm. so you'll want to match these guys so instead of you being bred nicely like a Sarah Brett, you know, you want to cut corners and then you fail when you get there. Okay. And then suddenly you have a heart attack because you lied to us. You said you are 21 when you are 31, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we train you as a 21 year old mm -hmm. because the system and the, 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 the documents says at this age you can do this, you can do that. Mm -hmm. At this age you can't do this, but you can mold to do that. But because you lied, it catches up with you. Mm. So don't even ever lie mm. about your age because it will catch up with you. Sure, good. And to family members, how can they be more supportive of somebody who's chasing this dream? I've always said to family members, I question myself that why would we find some families, especially white families, when the, the ladies play hockey they all day in the morning mm. the following day or in the afternoon the youngster is playing rugby they always do mm. i mean that's planning on saturday or on friday night you know you're going to have your fat cross and you all day as a family you watch with this person that's motivated knowing that you're there but the answer is very simple priorities prioritize we only have this moment together in life. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that life has no guarantees. Mm -hmm. As a family, tomorrow I don't know when you'll be. I mean, yesterday I didn't know that. Yesterday, literally, I didn't know that my youngsters will not be living with me. Mm -hmm. But today I'm saying, man, can't you just pop in and say hi? Mm -hmm. You know, I just want that. I'm in Pretoria. Oh, but you drove past you know, my house. Literally. You know? So that's when you even end up thinking the moment that you have with them, share it with them. Mm -hmm. Because you never know when that moment will happen again. Because these are the youngsters that tomorrow they married them somewhere else and they're normal with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a mission for them to visit you. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they even feel that, uh, you know, you can't come to your taxi. <laughs> you know, we in the suburb. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's do change. change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I think I love how you say save the moment and use every opportunity to support the person because you nurture them that dream with them. Yeah, and not only that, but also you are not a choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are a given. Mm -hmm. Given by God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a choice. I didn't choose you, you, you mm -hmm. to be my family. Mm -hmm. You are a given. Mm -hmm. So save the moment because mm -hmm. you are the only ones that can say this is us, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but Max, maybe you can tell us how many languages do you speak? I can confidently say I speak seven African languages, mm -hmm. then English and Afrikaans. But then I also went on to learn French at the Mercury School of Languages because I had no choice there mm -hmm. because of the 1998 World Cup in France mm -hmm. and also the African Nations Cup in Burkina Faso. Sure. So how important is versatility of language for sportscasters, sports presenters? It's very important because you do go to other countries where the guys don't 
listen to you when you don't uh, speak their language. Mm. And also you need to appeal to the camp mm -hmm. to speak to their star mm. or to the goal scorer or to the coach. Mm. Mm. And it also helps when there is always going to be this interference of an interpreter mm. where you now mm. look like you're watching tennis and then mm. you are scratching Waiting and for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so then at least you can communicate and interpret yourself yes. so it's easier that way and it also helps even the production time mm. because you're not going to wait for this guy gives you a three minutes answer and the three minutes interpretation and you come with your two minutes question sure yeah. sure I love that. Before I let you go, any parting shots that you'd want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, uh, I always want to say it's important to be healthy. It's important to look after yourself. Make sure that you don't prioritize uh, drinking as, as the thing to do. I mean, I know there are people that say it's come Friday. <laughs> you must know how many people have died through mm -hmm. alcohol. Just be yourself. And you know what it does to us on the road. And uh, you've got to always make sure that you become responsible. But more than anything, keep a healthy lifestyle and you will always live long and happy. Absolutely. What a wholesome, humbling conversation that we've had with soccer legend Mark Sokoyani. Thank you so, so much once again for your time and the valuable lessons that you have given us. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And stay tuned for more updates on our YouTube channel. From us to you, God bless you.